you gotta hold there is that you're gonna see this gentleman here is very smart it's not like the other people you know he doesn't want to be leaning you know or uh, what you say lying around the edge to see if the island is floating or not he just made a hole in the middle of the island and he will take that rock you know you see and he will just put this through or he will throw this you know all the way to the bottom of the lake is that you're gonna see see the rock the water is already there see all the water you can see so only as much as this no more than that is dried the rest all comes underneath is wet you can see the water that's why i mean so let's throw this the rock to the bottom of the lake as you're looking it goes all the way to the bottom i will not say this time can you guess how deep it is because i already told it to you right <laughs> it's about 60 feet you keep looking it's going all the way to the bottom it can be less than 60 feet it depends you know some islands they got about 60 feet 40 feet or some of them they get about 100 but this time i guess it's around 50 to 60 feet Natalie, vamos a la escuela. Vamos a ir rápido. Ahorita, con los días, mamá. Camisará aquí. ¿Sí? Ya está. Jala, tatita. Jala para, para Bolivia, para Bolivia. Allá. Adiós, Adoa. Adiós, amigo. Chao, amigo. Chao. Hasta Bolivia. He's going to Bolivia now. Look at him, he keeps going. Ciao amigo! Hey, you don't have a passport, why you go to Bolivia? Because, <laughs> you know, we're very careful. On the lake, you know, anywhere, we have a boat. We can take, you know, from one side of the lake. We can cross the border, but we never land. We don't want to get in trouble with the Bolivian police. Is that what they don't do? See, it's about 60 feet. Is that you can see? How deep it was. What we made, you know, what we just made, you call in English, clamping the depth, I guess, or clamp depth and we were like sounding it. So some of the people, they know that when the island is less than that, when the island is almost touching the bottom, we have to build a new island. She's Natalie. Hola, Natalie. Mira. She's shy. Hola. Hola, mama. She's going her kindergarten. You know where does she study? Waliki. Is that the way we respond here? You know, they ask to you, once you got off the boat, have you realized? They were saying, Kamisaraki, Kamisaraki, shaking hand, Kamisaraki. And then they stopped it because you didn't say any word after that. So you had to say Waliki. Waliki means we're super, we're fine, we're okay. Because the, uh, the question they did was, how do you do? How do you do? That, that's the, the way we answer. So local people here, they say Kamisaraki. Instead, good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Whenever you are meeting somebody, say Kamisaraki. We go. The next island we will visit is her kindergarten. She's going out the kindergarten. You see? She's got her braids already. These nice tassels, a nice jacket in here, and a nice skirt, pink one, when she's young. But while she's growing up, then someday she's going to get engaged. And then she's going to marry. And then she's going to have a husband. The tassel is going to change the color. Won't be any more pink. They'll be black. Okay? Brown, black, any other are people got engaged, people got, you know, married. And they are different. They belong to a different status. Is that what they do? That's simple here. Bright colors, young people. Dark ones are going to be adults or already married. That's what they do. See also? She's got a headband. And she's got nice braids. And this is the mother. The father is not here, but you know, this is the relatives of the family. You visit in an island where Natalie, she's got her relatives, aunt, uncles, you know, all of them. So cannot be different people because someday they, once they are teenagers, young ones, they're growing up. They're going to go from this island to the next one and they'll try to find a husband, a wife. <laughs> they just go to the mainland where we celebrate St. James, St. Peter, St. John the Baptist. Every celebration, festivity you call, we go and we try to party and then we try to find a couple, a partner, or just a boyfriend and a girlfriend. Is that what they're going to do? So she's Natalie. Hola, Natalie. ¿Te vas a la escuela? The, the beautiful hat she's got, you know, 
It's quite special. You see the mother? She's got a bowler hat, the English we were talking yesterday. And you see here, this, this lady's got another small, or well, longer one, but we call that fuchsia shape hat. Is that what it called? And you got in the garden, fuchsias. And then you can see also she's got a different color because still I remember you, when they're young, when they're not married, not engaged, they're gonna have always the brighter, the best, and the nice colors, or the colorful you call. Is that what you got here? Um, looking around, have you noticed? Everybody works, everybody seems to be busy. This, all the men you see here, they should be now going to fish because in the afternoon, uh, when we, when it, almost the sun is setting, I mean, they go to, you know, drop and put the nets in the water. And then, you know, wives gonna stay on the island. They're looking after the children and they cook for them. They do what you call a housekeeping, a housekeeper sometimes, that's what they do. But, uh, you know, some other day, also you stop at the daytime, the gentleman there and then the other, they're just making this, what you call, this uh, reed boat for souvenir. So the way we do, daytime is entirely working for tourists, souvenirs and embroidering, you know, all those things. You're gonna see right there, they make these uh, nice mobiles, they got with colors, and then they call these, everything we make here has a meaning. This time, that one, the mobile represent a wedding. Why? You can see, every boat is hanging, it's got just one person. But if you see the one in the middle, the longer one, you're gonna see it's got the bride and the groom. When they just marry, they go and they're representing it, a wedding celebration. Is that what they do? You're gonna see also already here the boat, you know, the Kantiki or the Titicaca, whatever you call this, you know, is that representing, you know, their present. You're gonna see also the embroidering, and then they got here, this is the religious, and then the next one, the first, the blue one, is daily patent. So you gotta need, if I can say, there, that old lady, we met an old lady here, she's the, you know, to be the oldest lady, or oldest woman of the island, it's a really very big, a very nice privilege. She is the midwife of the island. Who come, who help these people to give birth, to do, you know, the childbirth, the midwife. She's like the medicine woman of the island. So she's here, you see, this lady, and she's grinding her uh, grains, cereals, just to make flour and bread and cream soups, whatever. See here, next, this is the other lady, and she's just feeling what we did before, you know, cooking and putting the reeds in the stuff. So you can see the birds, they, you know, we go and then their nests and we collect the eggs. You can see then some people here that they're going on the reed boats when they take the tourists around and whatever comes around is just every day's life. Is that what they do? Now you see the next, you got in it, the religion, I call Father Earth, the idol, or let's say this, this design here, the figure here, is about Father Earth. What's next? This one here is about God of punishment. So this would be the sacrifice, God, God of sacrifice, sorry, is that it called? And then you got here, the one, the, the ink I just mentioned in the boat earlier, this is the one emerged from the bottom of the lake. But they call now, you know, the world and locals people creator. What do you got here? Down below, you got Mother Earth, and the next you got a Titi, or let's say you got a Puma of the local people. Is that what you got? This is religious. When you look in this, all these things, you know, you're looking at what the local people make, and it's every day in their head. They just have to buy the clothes, which is going to be this. You got it anywhere around, you're gonna buy this in the city or whatever, but the embroidery in here, all is made locally on the islands too. Is that what you got? If this is the best or the summary we could have made about their life, you know, so you got most details, except something you didn't ask. Water, we still get it from the lake. We need to take our pots. We got a big uh, ceramic or pottery, you know? And then we take these to rowing to farther places where are about one mile, half a mile away from here. Uh, I mean, at least should be a clean and pure water place. And we just grab and we take some water to home where we're gonna boil and drink it. That's one way. Because, you know, I, wouldn't, I won't drink this water here. Why I won't do that? Obviously, local people here and you call this you know sanitation the sanitation on the islands is an outhouse and an outhouse you know it's got a bucket when this is full we have to take somewhere else to to throw or just to bury at the mainland is that what i do if you cannot do that you know if you test the water here i'm sure you can find some coliforms 
or some pests or bacteria, whatever you know, parasites you call, because also are the city, you know, um, sewage, or some of them they just threw it before in the water of Titicaca Lake. Is that what they, why they do not, you know, drink this water straight here? We are uh, looking the reeds, I mean, and the reeds they are like, you know, a filter. They filter out, you know, the clean, sorry, the dirt, the, the polluted part, and the clean one, which is that way. Is that 